The opinions expressed on the ACB Media Network are those of the content providers and should not be viewed as an endorsement of any product or service. Nor does it reflect the views of the American Council of the Blind, its elected officials, or its staff. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Herbie's Cooking Corner for January 24th, 2023. Today we are going to be making French toast and uh, I want to uh, welcome everybody to the call, including uh, my support staff here. First of all, as always, co-facilitating with me is uh, Twinkling Tori. Hello. Hello. And uh, hosting for us today, the recipe swap lady, I guess we can call her, cause, uh, and uh, the birthday girl as well, but I'm making her blush as uh, Sheila. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And over on Clubhouse is uh, Allison. Hello, Allison. Hello. Good morning, Herbie and Tori and everybody and Sheila and all. <laughs> and uh, well, good morning. Good morning. And uh, Deb is streaming for us. And so today we are, uh, like I said, we're going to make French toast. Now, by the way, I do want to mention I've, I hadn't gotten a chance to put last week's call up on the YouTube yet. But I am glad to see that people are seeing the channel. In fact, I just got a comment this morning on the soup call that I got uploaded a couple weeks ago and uh, somebody commenting and thanking me for uploading the call and uh, really appreciating the information that uh, we provided. So that's what we aim to do here on the, these cooking calls. So uh, we hope that uh, you do get a chance to check them out, whether it's live in podcast form on the YouTube channel. Our goal here is to help you be able to learn how to uh, cook and learn things and have fun doing so. So this is going to be a fun recipe. I have done a French toast recipe before on this call, and that was a baked French toast. But today we are going to do the fried kind. I gave you all the recipe. I make a couple of slight modifications that I'm going to talk about. And I'll just, actually I can go ahead and briefly mention those. Two things, one, I do like to add in a little bit of sugar to sweeten the flavor of the French toast a little bit so it's not so bland. And uh, two, I do use um, more cinnamon than what it calls for. But uh, also, it tells you to use cooking spray. I honestly find that using a little bit of oil instead works a lot better. You can do whatever method you want. I realize that if you are not comfortable with the stovetop cooking, you probably don't want to do the oil method just because that is a little bit more intense than using cooking spray is going to be. So otherwise, this is going to be your simple... I don't like look at this mixing bowl. I thought it was a little bit cleaner than it was. There we go. Kitchen problems already. So this is going to be your simple eggs, milk, vanilla, cinnamon. We also add in the nutmeg, like I said, a little bit of sugar, and um, there's my other mixing bowl. Okay, so the newer one. That's what we'll get used today. And uh, Tori, towards the end, will give us uh, vegan French toast. And uh, if we have time, um, if the person's on here, she will just let her talk about the things that she uh, sent me via email. But I uh, was already getting inundated with some uh, French toast ideas uh, before the call even started. Let's start with the eggs. So this recipe calls for either eggs or egg whites. I guess you could also use both if you really wanted to, but we're just going to use eggs. Let's though talk about real quick eggs versus egg whites. So the eggs of course come in the shell. Egg whites have the advantage of they are in a carton so you don't have to crack anything unless you want to separate the egg white from the yolk. And we have talked about techniques for that like you can use some um, egg separators or your fingers. The egg white is the more liquidy part. The yolk is the more solid part, even though it's still liquid. But we're going to use standard eggs. And I'm actually going to use... I, I find that how many eggs you use is going to affect the consistency of the batter. And so I find that if I use three eggs, it tends to make uh, the batter a little bit more thicker. 
so I've got a brand new carton here and let's make sure that they are not going to fall off the countertop as uh, so that would be very exacerbating and so I'm going to crack egg number one and this is one of those calls that gives us exact measurements I must admit I don't measure exactly with this one because in the end you it's don't have going to. to exactly Ah, and now one of my shells fell into the bowl, so I got that out. Thankfully, I cracked it evenly, so there's no bits of shell. It was a half shell, so, you know, you, you talk about uh, turtles in the half shell. Let's talk about eggs in the half Oh, I, I don't know if your tortoise likes Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or not. Doesn't matter if the tortoise does. I do. You know, I don't know how the tortoise feels about turtles, so. I, I haven't actually asked. Oh, well, you might want to. I might, but not right now. Alrighty then. Well, I'm going to put these to eggs... the recipe. <laughs> yep. I'm going to put these eggs back in the fridge, and I've got the milk. I think it calls for like a half cup of milk, but I'm just going to pour some in the bowl until I can tell that it's covering the eggs. If you care, if you really want a thin batter though, that's where you definitely want to follow the recipe exactly. So, but if you really don't care, then you can just use your uh, hands and fingers and pour some in the bowl. By the way, I'm using a full size mixing bowl. I find that does work the best for containing the liquids. You could use a smaller bowl if you want. But, um, using a bigger one is probably easier when it comes to dipping the bread slices afterwards. A lot easier. So, while I'm doing this, I could either wait and heat up the pan or get it heating up now. I'm gonna wait a little bit. So, first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and mix this stuff together. Well, I can add in the vanilla now, but I find that if I whisk all this together and then add in the powdery ingredients, it tends to blend better together with how the mixture absorbs the stuff. So I've got me a brand new vanilla bottle. We've talked about these before very recently because of the brownie recipes. And um, this one is a good size one, actually, so I don't think I'd ever confuse it with a Tylenol bottle, but you can never be too sure. Um, but I don't have liquid Tylenol, so that makes that a lot easier. I'm going to open the lid. The bottle has a plastic uh, film sticker on it, and I'm going to see if we can be nice and neat and professional and peel it off. I think we can. Yay! Otherwise I'd stick a uh, small knife blade into the center of the sticker and peel it that way, but I could use my nails to kind of feel to the side where there's a little tab and pull up and that reveals it and then I could just peel it off. In theory, that's how you're supposed to open it. Yep. So I don't know if you heard that or not. I just poured a splash of vanilla in there and... You know, this is for flavoring, so if you are not a big vanilla fan, then obviously you would want to use a lot less. You don't want to use the whole bottle. I think that would be a bit much there. So using Again, some in general, even if you're not a big fan of the flavor, will help to bring out the other flavors. So you want to use a little, even if you don't want to use a lot. Exactly. I put in a definitely good splash, and uh, if you are want to do precise measurements, oh, I would say at least a good two teaspoons, maybe. Oh, it will actually add in a little bit more. Than what Make I it three teaspoons, is it? <laughs> um, you can may as well just do a tablespoon then. Why and not? That, but yeah, exactly. Well, because it's a lot easier, you know, you can do three teaspoons or you can do a tablespoon, which is three teaspoons, and save yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm just agreeing that a tablespoon of vanilla would be better than the little bit that they say you should add. Yes. And that's the mistake I made when I first made this recipe is using too little, so. All right. So I'm right now, I'm using an egg whisk for this, and it's just your typical wire whisk. It uh, 
how to describe it, you know, it has, it, it's a whisk. You can find these at any uh, store and you can use this. If you do not have a whisk, then a fork will also work. What this does is it separates the eggs and makes them all nice and liquidy, which is what we want. So now comes herbie modification with the sugar. So I said that adding a little bit of sugar also, you know, makes this a little bit more sweeter. You don't really want too much sugar. About a fourth of a cup, if even that should be sufficient. You might even want to just do a tablespoon. The idea is just to add in a tiny bit of sweetener and uh, that makes, in my opinion, the batter a little bit more rich. So actually a fourth cup would be a bit too much. I think I'd uh, the, the tablespoon. I think a tablespoon would be enough. Um, yeah. The other option if you're trying to watch your sugar intake but want to do the sweetness is to add more cinnamon when that comes to yep. be added. So I just took out my sugar container, scooped out a tablespoon, and I'm going to, it's not a full tablespoon, because like I said, the idea is just to add to the um, thing here. Okay, so that is, uh, got a little bit of extra sugar on my hands, but that's what happens when you deal with sugar. So this is why we end up here. washing our hands a lot when we're cooking. Exactly. So I'm now going to put the sugar container away. And it's always a good idea to put your stuff away if you think about it. I realize that it's much more efficient and better to be lazy, but then I have learned the hard way that accidents can happen. So if you're not careful. All right, cinnamon. This comes in a round bottle. How do I know it's cinnamon and not other spice? Well, just because the fact that I just got a new bottle the other day, so I put it in a place where I could find it. Otherwise, I could use a barcode scanner to read the label. There are also cinnamon bottles that do come like in your rectangular containers, and this just depends on the brand and whatnot. And also the store it came from sometimes as well. Yep. And if you have a sense of smell, of course, once you get the plastic paper off, it's uh, you can tell that it's cinnamon. So, as long as you know what cinnamon's easy. supposed to smell like. Exactly. So this one, I'm just going to. Uh, well, I tell you what, we will actually get my two tablespoon measure out for this one, as uh, we like a lot of cinnamon. And, okay, there's my other one tablespoon measure. I thought I had my two tablespoon. I do. Yes, I do. Do, do. There we go. And I don't know if you can fully overdo the cinnamon on this one. Again, you wouldn't want to do, like, the whole bottle. But... I think you can overdo it, but it would be difficult. Yes. So we're going to pour a good portion into this two tablespoon measure. It doesn't have to be completely full because we're already overdoing it, but the more you add in, the more flavor it's going to get. And Basically, it's a case of cinnamon to taste. Exactly. You like a lot of cinnamon, and then add the a last... lot of cinnamon. You don't just add a pinch. Yep. Now, another interesting French toast filler, we're not going to do that for this call, but my mother-in-law does this actually, is apple pie filling. And so um, that has been another French toast filler that I've seen. Interesting. Yep. And last one is Utmeg. Why am I calling it Utmeg? Well, when this got labeled, there, it's missing an M. Or an, an N. So it literally leads Utmeg. Oops. So, <laughs> so uh, I hope you all like Utmeg. And um, I had this labeled because, again, this is one of those spices that comes in like these little tiny jars. And there's just a lot of them that come in this type of thing from Utmeg to Allspice to um, 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 quite a bit of others. Curry powder can come in the small thing. And chili powder. Oops. Red pepper. I have red pepper. I would not want to mix that up with the nutmeg. 
And we're going to pour quite a bit of nutmeg in here. I mean, not too much. So um, this one has a great... Uh, I'm just actually gonna nutmeg is it. something you can easily overdo. Yes. So this one, I'm just lifting the lid and um, sprinkling it in. Okay, there we go. And now that that is done, I'm going to put that up. Oh, cream of tartar. That's another one that comes in these small containers. And so now that that's done, we are going to whisk it up and go on to the next part of our project, which is actually frying the French toast. No, actually, so, technically, again, the next part is turning the um, pan on. Well, okay, yes, that that is, uh, yes. And again, we're using the whisk and uh, just going to get all blended together. This is a nice, simple batter to work with. So, and I'm just kind of whisking it around using my whisk to feel parts that feel like a little bit clumpy so I get to them all and you can just do different motions to kind of get a good feel for the thing because you want it all nicely blended and I just lost the whisk inside the bowl there we go there we go Okay, so I'm going to use just a little bit of uh, vegetable oil. This is one thing, again, you can overdo, but you don't want to underdo it either because then you're going to have burnt French toast. So I'm just going to put some oil on the bottom of the pan and make sure it's covered, but it's not swimming in oil. So you just want enough to coat, like I said, the bottom of the pan. You can also use what the recipe calls for and use the cooking spray. You can also and use going... butter or you can use different oils like rapeseed or olive oil. Yep. Um, and I'm going to set this to, you know, medium high, I think, is what I will use for this new wave. And we're going to let it uh, start to uh, heat up. So let's talk about the bread that we're going to use. You can use any kind of bread that you want, but we, Chanel and I did find that Ezekiel bread, for instance, which is a sprouted green bread, does not work as well for this as like just using wheat bread or French bread. Um, yeah, a lot of the um, grain breads tend to kind of fall apart when you try and soak them in things. Yep, and they just don't taste as good for in that French yeah. toast batter. And uh, I meant to suggest to Cindy that she could also try using her New York bagels as French toast. But she could have, yeah. Cinnamon so and note, raisin bagels make great French toast. I also thought about using cinnamon bread or French toast flavored bread, which might be overdoing it a little bit, but. Well, cinnamon bread works if you don't bother adding the cinnamon to the mixture in the first place. Very true. But yeah, I do All think right. the French toast favorite bread is probably overdoing it. Yep. Okay, so on the, that note, um, while the oil is heating up, do we have any questions? So you should be able to hear the uh, sizzling. We can. All right. So let's start things over on the Zoom side. Do we have anybody? Abraham. Hello, All Abraham. right. I was wondering. Hi. <laughs> um, if you guys are super lazy and um, want to skip making your own like custard to dip the bread in, uh, melted ice cream also works. It probably does. Oh, really? Yeah, melted ice yeah. cream. Throw, just throw in a bit of cinnamon and you. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's a uh, very similar mixture. Yeah, and you uh, can make then other flavors, so like a, use chocolate ice cream instead. Yeah. Um, and then um, another th nice thing to do is crush up some cornflakes, dip your uh, bread after the custard into the crush up cornflakes, and bake that, or fry that at least. 
I bet really good. Really good. Yeah, nice and crunchy. They call that fried yeah. ice cream over in Mexico. So it's essentially right, the same thanks. kind of mixture, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really good. Thanks, All everyone. Right. All right. Anybody uh, over on the clubhouse side? We have no raised hands right now, Herbie. Employee. All right. Anybody else on Zoom? Heidi. All right. Hello. I actually have another tip. You could actually use eggnog. Yeah, that's also right. an option. All right, so bread packages, you're probably all familiar with them, but you've got that little uh, flat twist tie at the top. So we take that off, taking out the bread. You can either use the heel of the bread or not, depending on your preference. And so I'm just going to dip the bread in the batter, turn it over, dip it again, and I'm going to take it out. Then re-dip it, which kind of makes for a smooth and a little bit of a thicker batter and then bread number one is going to go gently into the pan the reason why gently because if you just plop it in it can splash the oil and that is not fun let me tell you it's very very so painful I have like, and messy yes so i'm doing two pieces of bread per pan I find that is the easiest just to keep track of when it comes to flipping. Hey Google, set timer for three minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to let it cook and then we're going to flip it over. That'll give me a chance to determine if I need to make the pan even hotter. In the meantime, let's focus on some side dishes and you're going to put in a couple of hash brown patties into the air fryer. And uh, this one can only fit two at a time. Other side dishes that go well with this, the scrambled eggs. Though some people think that's too much having scrambled eggs with French toast. But, uh, it's scrambled tofu goes great with it. I bet it would. And uh, also, you know, turkey bacon, or I guess in your guys' case, regular bacon, and, uh, or regular sausage, or uh, the veggie bacon with a veggie sausage. So if you're doing a tofu scramble, that might be a bit much with the protein. I don't know. But, uh, well, no, if that's what you want. I mean, there's, there's protein in actual eggs anyway, so if you're going to be having scrambled eggs and bacon potentially with it, then it would be a similar kind of protein intake to having tofu and the veggie sausage slash bacon. Yep. So. Okay. Now, turkey bacon, where did you go? So, you know, by the way, guys, one of the things that people mention that they don't like about turkey bacon is that it tastes like uh, cardboard. And that is true, but and not true because it really depends on the type of turkey bacon you get. And also uh, how you genio cook it. And how you cook it, yes. I'm going to get into that eventually. Genio, for instance, is probably the most cardboard-like of all the brands that I've tasted. I recommend the Oscar Mayer brand for a decent all the way around brand. Butterball is not too bad. They are the guys that uh, do know how to make turkey and so you probably had Butterball turkey for your Thanksgiving. And I, I know you didn't but uh, the other brands that I really like though are the store-bought brands which are thick sliced turkey bacon. They are more natural and taste a lot more real. No you're not gonna have the grease of regular bacon but hey google stop but it's not gonna taste like cardboard either and i'm using a uh, grill plate to cook mine but you can also use a microwave but again using a grill plate it cooks it differently than the microwave so you're that... more likely to have it being cardboard and tasting if you do it in the microwave exactly so those are some factors when dealing with turkey bacon as if you, if you want to try a healthier alternative to bacon now you know, notice i say healthier i didn't say healthy because it's still got like salt and stuff in it so i'm, I'm sure it's not completely healthy but uh there's very little that is 100 percent healthy 
Exactly. We learned from Cindy a couple weeks ago that uh, set vegetables, for instance, are not healthy for you. So, uh, well, at least eating okay. them isn't healthy for the vegetables. Exactly. You vegetable murderers, you. But, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, there's a song by the Arrogant Worms called uh, Carrot Juice's Murder. Great song. I actually thought about that myself for karaoke. Cindy pulled it off fantastically. Yeah, she did. Alright, so I used a double spatula to flip the French toast. Hey, Google. Set timer for three minutes. And I now put my uh, turkey bacon on a grill, my indoor grill thing, and now it's cooking. So I used a double spatula. I know I've talked about this before, so basically it's two spatulas on a hinge. And there's a bigger spatula on the bottom and a smaller spatula on the top. You can get these from anywhere that sells kitchen supplies, and you can also get them from places like Maxi Aids. There's also another one that has, I've seen, that you can lock the spatula in place and it's like too, it, it's plastic rather than metal. I don't like that one really. I think the metal one works a lot better. So you use the bottom part to scoop up, you press down the top part to hold it in place, you flip, you let go, and uh, voila. And it's a lot easier for me at least than using a regular spatula which requires balancing and things like that. You do have to be careful though because if you grip it the wrong way it can still fall out of the double spatula so you want to kind of or make sure you or fall apart. So you really want to try to use your spatula to gauge where you're feeling. It does take a little bit of practice at first but uh, believe me it'll make your life a whole lot easier if uh, you uh, try a double spatula. That is, um, in fact, it was something I was recommending to uh, Colby, uh, you all may remember, uh, when she was trying to f do asparagus on the stove and using tongs. And tongs are not easy to use. Tongs are not so, easy to use when you're sighted. They're even more difficult when you're not. Yep. Wow. Sighted people, if you guys are out there, try the double spatula thing yourself too. I think you'll find that your life is going to be a lot easier. Even my husband and, will sometimes uh, throw aside the tongs and use the spatula. You're getting him trained well. Okay, so uh, while this Just is thinking. frying, the, the, oh, the other sorry. thing I'll mention is another... Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I just um, had a mess. It wasn't cooking related, but it did contain some interest, an interesting piece of news. It's snowing in Phoenix. That is interesting. Well, all I can say, guys, is if you call a desert that hot place that uh, down below that you don't want to see freezing over, well, it's freezing over now. Yeah, that's the gist so. of what the message said, actually. <laughs> but I didn't think I would that's mention funny. that part. That's <laughs> funny. Well, I'm mentioning it in an ACB family way. But it is snowing in Phoenix. There you go. Even Phoenix is getting snow. All right. There's two places I would not want to be during a snowstorm, Houston or Phoenix, because uh, they don't know how to handle it. I'd rather be in a hurricane in Houston than in a snowstorm in Houston. You should see You should see here when we get more than about an inch of snow. It's hilarious. Let's just yeah, say most, see, of, you guys... most of the evening don't know how to handle more than an inch of snow, and it's funny. But you guys are probably, you, you know, at least you get snow. I mean, you have, yeah, not that. Yeah, but um, that's my point. Anyway, it's funny enough with us that yes. we sometimes get snow. I bet it's even worse for them. Yep. Uh, much worse, because uh, they don't even have any snow shovels. I mean, you can get stuff from, like, I don't know, maybe the Flagstaff area where there's the mountains and whatnot. But uh, getting it, uh, anyway. Let's go back to cooking, though. Yeah, though I will mention, well, okay, one other thing I'll mention with, um, I should see if I, except I don't have any snow to practice this on, but there is a, um, um, the children's series called the uh, Boxcar Children, and one of the things they make in there in the Snowbound Mystery is a snow ice cream. Yeah, Ibrahim you don't want to make it. talking about ice cream earlier. You don't want to. I don't, okay. No. That, that, that's true. The environment was a lot cleaner back when the Boxcar Children was written. So I, yeah, uh, but, but. back then, maybe. Now, no. I, I, no. I mean, I love snow, yeah. and we've, we've actually got some right now, which it's been sticking around. We've, we've had snow for an entire week now. All right. Well, so. you all can have it, is all I'm going to say to that. Okay, so I'm going to see how this French toast is looking. So I'm going to take one off out of the pan and onto the plate. Wait, where did my plate go? There it is. 
and uh, okay, it's sticking together, but it is. It looks very uh, fluffy. The key to uh, this stuff, by the way, I've had it drilled into my head to make sure I do this, especially when you're dealing with the unsalted butter, is to put your butter on right away so it melts in. So uh, that's what I'm going to do. If you're going to butter it, because some people don't even If you're going to butter, to butter it. it. I'm going to put some butter on this. And then Chanel, did you want syrup? Yeah, a little bit. So a little bit. So you want me to put it on then, or do you just want me to put the bottle on the... Uh... Just put the bottle on the table. Okay, that's what I thought, but you said a little bit, so I wanted to make sure... Well, have to know oh. how to communicate, guys. So. Just put the bottle on the table, Herbie, as you're told. Yeah. I, I, I Well, I was just making sure I was doing what I was told, because, you know, that is uh, very important, you know, doing as you're told, guys. What, what, what are the important keys in marriage if you were the husband? You do as you're told, so. And, uh, oh, he's, he's a fast learner. I know. All right, so now I've got to find the syrup. But, okay, here we go. Well, the French toast is ready. The other stuff is coming, but if you want to have the French toast while it's hot. And I've got oil sitting in a pan. I'm coming. I'll be there in a few minutes. All right. While you're dishing all that up, should I tell people what I do for my vegan version? You should tell people what you do for your vegan version, yes. Okay. So, my recipe is very similar to Herbie's, except obviously you want to change out the milk for a vegan alternative, such as soy or almond milk. And instead of the eggs, you want a bit of nutritional yeast and some flour because that will help with the setting that the eggs do and also the nutritional yeast will help with the slight eggy type of taste. I do also, like Herbie, add the sugar and cinnamon and all that lot because it tastes really good. That's how I veganize the French toast recipe is by replacing the eggs with nutritional yeast and flour and the milk with a vegan alternative. Otherwise, I essentially do the same thing. Obviously, if you have a gluten allergy, that would be a problem for you. Um, but if you do have an egg allergy at the same time, you do have the option of using some kind of egg replacement. Or you can not worry about thickening your batter as much. Use some gluten-free flour option to thicken it slightly. And to get that slight eggy taste, use some black salt because it will help with that taste. And a little bit of turmeric as well. If you've got allergies or dietary preferences, I mean, you can't have the usual recipe. Exactly. All right, guys. So I've taken the ash hash browns, the ash browns, yikes, out of the air fryer. We're going to check on the turkey bacon. It looks good. you got and ash meg and ash browns? Yes! <laughs> All right, well, I tell you what. Um, before I, while well, I'm dishing, I need the turkey bacon to cool down for a second. So we're going to find out how my uh, French toast uh, turned out. You already cut it up. Thank you. Should I try a bite without the syrup first? Nope, or? you can, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Yep. Oh yeah, you, you, you shouldn't be squeezing the syrup. Yikes. Okay. You meant to put the original sound. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I believe in the immersive experience. What can I say? I, I guess so. Uh, oops. Um. Let's see here. Hmm. Not bad. Pretty good. Not bad. Pretty good. I, don't I guess. I don't know. I'm. Everybody is waiting in anticipation as I eat, so it's hard to. Uh, I don't know. No pressure or anything. It's good. <laughs> well, see, if you eat them, I can't get yelled at for talking with my mouth full. So. Yes, All right. Well, we're gonna go back Chanel into the kitchen. Swallows before she speaks. You see. No. 
So I am going to put the stuff on the plate and you can either have it on a separate plate or you can have it all on one. Now another thing that I actually have seen is maple turkey bacon as well, so, but I've only seen that at H-E-B, not at Walmart. And actually, right, maple we're going syrup to... tastes really good on hash browns. It does, too, yeah. Yes. Well, we're going to pour this now on the plate, and are you going to want more French toast? Mm. Did you just give me one piece or two? Two. It'll probably be fine. All right. Unfortunately, sometimes you can have more batter than French toast, but that's how these things oh. look. Well, I can try to eat another piece, but... Well, you don't have to. Well, how about so well, have, have what you got and there's more mixture for later if you want more. Exactly. All right. So um, we're going to do my French toast now. Though my hash browns are not going to be the patties. I'm actually going to do real potatoes because that's what I feel like. So I will be doing some cutting and I don't mind the heel of the bread. No, it's kind of a waste well, of batter. Okay. Actually, I'm with Chanel. If you're going to be toasting it anyway, the heel of the bread is fine, but you don't want that for sandwiches. All right. And one thing I forgot to do is make sure that the batter gets on the edges of the bread, too. So, um, there, we're doing that. Okay. Hey, Google, set timer for three minutes. So one of the things I've learned with this French toast is, at least for the size of my pan, but yours is going to be about the same size, two really works best because you don't want them to overcook, otherwise they could be on top of each other and they don't cook as evenly, so. All right, now is the time for questions and I'm going to melt some ice cream and put some on bread and see how that works. No, I, actually I won't, but... Uh, Maybe do that another time. Use um, up your batter for now. Yeah, oh, okay. Very good. I'll do as I'm told. So, good boy. And I'm going to get out some potatoes for cutting in the meantime. Well, so, Herbie let's does that, start do thing. Do we have any hands in Zoom? You do. I apologize if I butcher your name, but I think it's Rahel. Rahel, all right. Hello, Rahel. Hello, Herbie. Um, I got a lot of like, background noise in the background while you were doing a demo. Is there a way that you could like, turn that off and then go over the thing again? I missed the the beginning of the uh, making of French toast. What are the steps again? The, the the background noise is just his kitchen noise when he's doing stuff in his kitchen. It's kind of difficult for him to turn that off. But he can go through the steps again. I can. I'm being talked for. Wow. How do you like this? Okay. Well, here. I'm going to step away from the kitchen. So now hopefully you don't hear the background noise as much. I used two eggs. Well, actually I used three eggs to make an even thicker batter. This is one of those that's slightly modified from the recipe. I poured in enough milk to go over the eggs. I think the recipe officially calls for a half cup, but I didn't do a precise measurement because I don't need to. And then I added in a lot of vanilla, at least a good tablespoon. I whisked all that up so it would be nicely blended. Then I added about a tablespoon of uh, sugar for a sweetener, which is optional. And then I added in a lot of vanilla, at least a good tablespoon of that. And then a good, hey Google stop. Two teaspoons of cinnamon and then a little bit of nutmeg and I whisked all that together and then I put some oil in a pan and uh, let it uh, heat up while I was uh, whisking the other stuff and then dipped the bread into the batter. So I'm going to flip this particular piece. If I don't, uh, since I don't have a whip, uh, what you can just can use I a fork. You can use a fork. Like yep. A, or a, fork or... a fork. A fork. Uh, yeah. can, a fork. Hey Google, work just... set timer for three minutes. A fork will work just as well as a whisk. Oh, yep. okay. 
Okay. Thank but I you. do want to mention that I mean you can get a whisk from anywhere. Um, they're very easy to find. You shouldn't have any it, problems. They're easy there. to get. They're cheap to get. But if you don't have yeah. one, you can use a fork. Yeah, and blind mice smart. Yeah. They don't carry whisks and stuff. I haven't specifically looked for one on blind blind mice smart because it's not a blindness product, so I really couldn't tell you if they do okay. or not. But you can just as easily go to your local Walmart or whatever. And I don't know of any blind friendly whisks. Let's put it that way. How about that? Oh, okay. Um, okay. They're all the same, so. You use a special pan to pour the oil in and put the French toast on? To so cook I, or? so the reason, part of the reason for like for the background noise is because I'm using a new wave, which is an induction burner. And so it has like a cooling fan, but you can just use a regular pan on the stove. You can use an electric skillet, whatever works best for you. I forgot to mention that if you don't feel comfortable with oil, you can do what the recipe calls for and that's just use Pam instead. Or you could use some butter. Butter, though, I find can be a little bit more splashable than oil. So I recommend then you're cooking spray yeah. if you... And is there any adapter well, for the oil? Like, because I, I don't know if I you, can... You just want enough to bottom. coat the bottom of the pan. You oh, just okay. want enough to coat the bottom of the pan so you don't want a lot. You just so but, And you, you don't want too little because... Using... You have you trouble using the big bottle then that's when you want to use a cooking spray because then you can just spray the pan slightly okay exactly Thanks. yep and um actually i don't know if i've ever done this french toast recipe with butter i'm thinking about like with doing fried eggs like i noticed that the salted butter at least is a little bit more volatile than like say the unsalted butter um, i haven't noticed that i but I think it depends how much you use. Like with oil, if you use too much yeah. of it, then it's going to get quite splashy. So yeah, what you're hearing though, if I was using the stove, I would have my kitchen fan on instead. So, but I use a new wave because it's a contact point to burner, but any pan will work. So where do you get the new wave, the one that you use? From Amazon. And there is a specific model that I get that I'd have to look at the model number because um, it has buttons rather than touch screens. So you want one that has buttons. Hey, Google, stop. Not a uh, touch screen. So. And all right. Thank you, Rahil. OK, so now even I get to try my uh, French toast. I've not had a chance to yet because uh, any questions over on the clubhouse side? No questions right now. All right, so this French toast turned out a little on the fluffy side. And um, actually, this one side could be a little bit more cooked. Herbie, you have another so hand in Zoom. Excellent. OK, who have we got next? I am. And she's got the law on her side, so. That's cool, but uh, um, my question is, is a way of selling when it's done because I did the three minutes. That would be down to the temperature it was on. Is there a better way to estimate like how long to leave it on one side? If it still feels kind of soft, softer than you like, then flip it again, give it another minute, and then do the same on the other side and see how it is then. Okay. I have to cook some more. Mm -hmm. I gave you like four or five strips. Oh. <laughs> I hope that helps, Diane. Yeah, I think so. I I just put it in so. All right. And. Oh, I found one more strip of turkey. Hold on. Okay. Here's another okay, turkey do bacon. Have, do we have any hands over in Clubhouse, Allison? All right, I'm unmuted, right, guys? Yes. Yep. No, okay. we do not, Tori. Okay. Anyone All right, how about Zoom? Zoom? Yes, Abraham. Hello, Abraham. Abraham. I um another vegan alternative um is using banana and coconut cream. Yeah, so, uh, you won't get the uh, eggy taste, but it if will make it, a tasty egg. It will be uh, fair, yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> would be that would be very tasty. Um, the the version I do give it still gives you the eggy taste, but yes, if you just want something really tasty for um, a breakfasty toast thing, then naan and coconut cream definitely make something to try. So the one disadvantage with the thick batter, or an, an advantage depending on your preference, is the longer it's uh, in the bowl and sitting there, the thicker it gets. But it's a lot easier to use up, so I'm going to use this last bit of my last tube. Yes, this French toast is very filling. And like I said, you can do it the way the original recipe calls for, and that makes it for a thinner batter. So it's there's some personal preference involved with how you cook the stuff. Hey, Google, set timer for three minutes. Hey, Google, set timer for three minutes. I have to really yell at these devices, guys, let me tell you. Okay, so took six pieces. The be recipe calls for eight pieces, but because of how thick I made the batter, you know, it's just six to really use up the uh, batter for the French toast. And this is also a thicker bread, too. So there's just several different factors, such as the type of bread and... Yeah, All the kind of things. Will absorb it at different rates and different quantities. Exactly. And that's also going to affect how it cooks, too, Tyann, going back to your question. And I think there is enough cinnamon for me to taste. I'm tasting it. Yay! Excellent. Now, the other question is where did my maple syrup go? Here last. You might actually be right. No, I said left. Oh boy, I thought you weren't feeling well or something. Okay. Nope, it is on my left. All the way in the back here. Okay. Told you. Well, you did. I don't know how you know these things. I mean, never have even been here, so. I know. I'm Whoa, just that amazing. Just concerning. Alright, if you say so. Zoom is actually videoing you in secret, so she can, you know, so her phone is describing the video to you. And yeah. Well, yep. even if it was, that wouldn't be possible. So one of the reasons I don't do video is because the phone is actually in my pocket. So you'd oh. see my pants pocket, for one thing, if I did video. Mm -hmm. um, and what about those times you've had your phone you've been doing stuff. You do know all the devices are spying on you, right? Uh-huh. Something about I'm not actually That's on okay, Zoom. just as long as you know. Oh, you're not? Nope. But, um... So... But all your devices are all, spying on you and they're just giving me feedback. But that doesn't explain how you as a blind person can see my video anyway. Hey, well, according to one of the according to one of the doctors I spoke to after having my eye out at the exact same hospital, there's a chance I could still be able to see despite having two artificial eyes. So apparently, there's an implant in one of them that makes it possible. Hmm. Well, like given how well it's not working, I think I try a different hospital next time. So <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hey, Google, stop. Because the conversation went along the lines of, um, so you, both your eyes are artificial, yes. So how much can you see? Um, I, I get a different... Do you want to try that again? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'd consider a different doctor next time. Just, I, I mean, I, know, I realize that in the UK yeah. things are done a little bit differently and you sometimes have limited choices, but... Um, just, 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 just my thoughts on that subject is, uh... <laughs> well, thankfully, soon afterwards, I was discharged because there wasn't really anything they could do anymore once I, did, I didn't have any real eyes anymore anyway, so it's fine, I don't Or were they just eager to get rid again. of you? Uh, it's possible that that was the problem. Um, uh, yeah, it's, all, it's possible. I wouldn't blame them.
Well, I guess you could say to them, hey, Doc, well, I tell you what, how about you get a couple of these things in your head and you tell me how much you see? So I know what to measure my standards by. But I can see clearly now that you're not a good doctor, so hey, did that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> Just our luck, your eye doctor watches the archives yep. of this video. Hi, Tori's eye doctor. <laughs> you probably don't remember her out of you yeah. because she's one out of a million patients, but hi anyway. Um, we realize, hey Google, set timer for three minutes. I mean, the odds of your eye doctor actually watching this video are not high, but then again, these calls are open to the public, so anything is possible, so... Hey, it's um, possible. They're, I think the odds of that are higher than my odds of being able to see with artificial eyes at this precise moment. Yep. I mean, I know the technology is being developed, but at this point in time, it's not available, and it certainly wasn't 15 years ago when I had the eyes out. Right. Yeah, today it would, yeah. So Chanel, did you want more turkey bacon? Uh, no, but I did actually have a quest. Oh, well, there was a raised hand, so. Well, you're for, you're, well, you, I was talking to you anyway. So go, go ahead and ask your question. question. Okay, so mine is not so much about the cooking, but the, you know, when you put syrup on your plate and I always have the problem where I think, oh, I don't have enough, and I even try to spread my food, and then I put more syrup on, and there's way too much. Does anybody ever struggle with that, or am I just totally weird? Well, I don't struggle no, with that. No, uh, it's, it's a constant it, but, struggle. <laughs> the struggle okay. is real. Okay. I, I don't, I, I gotta be honest with you, I don't struggle with it. I just enjoy the messiness, so... Yeah, yeah but the frustrating thing is you think you that you've got uh, you haven't got yes. enough so then you add more but then you've got all this syrup and nothing to eat with it yes um i mean it really come it, it is a real struggle and this is why with cooking you know me exact measurements can really be a help because imagine the type of mess we make with cooking otherwise i mean for a recipe like this you don't need exactness but Depth perception can definitely be a tricky thing if you have no sight and um Although if it makes anyone feel to... better, the syrup thing can happen to sighted people too. Yeah. I think that sighted people maybe maybe I'm stereotyping here, so I, I apologize if I am, but I think sighted people they just put something on they it looks like enough and so they think that it is enough. And, yeah. um, whereas we, we can't tell that it looks, but yeah. So th there's no easy answer to that one. I guess the other thing you could do though for Chanel, for you or anybody that struggles with that type of thing is you can try to find like what the restaurants do and have those, um, little tubs of syrup. So that way you always have an exact measurement. So even if you use more than one tub, you could say to yourself, okay, so I know that for French toast, I use four of these little tubs of syrup every time. So that way, at least you'd but always have an exact measurement. But even that's not foolproof, because for example, there's these little tubs that come in when I order potato wedges. Hey, Google stop. And sometimes one tub is just right for one of the box of the wedges, but other times I need two. Yes. So even that's not foolproof. No, but at least you know how many boxes you, you've used. I mean, at least you know how many t tubs you've used. You know you might need a maximum of two instead of, like, still still yeah. might be better than half a bottle of ranch or, yeah, you know. True. So, I mean, it's, I didn't say it was the greatest idea, but that's probably the, if you really want preciseness, that's probably your best option. Not the most yeah, cost effective. Yeah, that's a good idea. Not the most cost-effective option, but it is the most foolproof option, yes. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So, it, um, so shall we see you. about... So. It's okay. Shall yep. we see All about right. this other hand? Yep. I guess I should really recategorize things. Raise hands in Zoom, Clubhouse, and in person. So, um, Okay, so who have we got next in Zoom? Raheel. Hello, Raheel. Raheel. Um, 
Herbie, how do you, uh, what are ways, what are the ways that you do uh, in, in um, the strips with the French toast? What do you, what method do you use? So you kind of cut out there for a little bit. So, so repeat the question again. I don't know why voiceover has to jump around, but anyway, uh, what are some ways that you cut up the French toast into strips? Alright, so first of all, let's talk about voiceover and it jumping around. Um, the reason why it does that is that was a great song by House of Pain back in the mid-90s. Oh, oh, but we're not talking about that, are we? Uh, um, Herbie. And, uh, so actually, to the, the strips, he was actually talking about strips, whereas it was the turkey bacon. Yes. The French toast was not strips. But if you want to cut French toast, you don't really need anything fancy. You can either just pull it apart with your fingers, you can use the side of the fork and cut it that way, or you can use a knife and fork. So um, French toast is not like cutting meat, so it's very soft, very pliable. And, um, and even I if you like get on you know, the crispy side, it's just like cutting a piece of toast. Yep. I mean, I can explain cutting, but, you know, I'm just, I'm feeling inspired based on the, some things Colby mentioned. I wonder if we should really get Cindy on here and see if she could describe to a mass audience uh, cutting techniques the way she did for Colby. So. I think that might be a very good idea. I think that Excuse might be me, too. Because um, I can okay. just, I know, I mean, like, I can describe cutting things, and I know how to do it when I'm actually doing it. Um, you know, like with the brownies, for instance, the other day, I did get those cut up. I just, you know, waited for them to cool enough, and then, like, Tori talked about, or somebody, you know, using your fingers to measure, but... Um, yeah, that was me. Yeah. I think maybe but, we, 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 it's a good idea to turn to the professionals for these things. So yeah, so from well. what I hear from Colby, Cindy is an expert on knowing how to cut things up when you can't see. Yep. We need to bring so, Cindy Hollis back onto the call. We do. All right. So we will have to uh, ask her about that. And, um,. I don't know if that would be an entire call, or we'll have to figure out something else to mix into the call, how that'll, that'll work yet, but, um, and I guess your dogs have some opinion on that, too. They think that meat should but, be involved, probably, knowing them. Yeah. <laughs> Thank All you very right. much, Kirby, and I'll see you at the back call tonight. Excellent. Well, uh, all right. Well, there's a Mac call that's happening on iBug. I'm doing an iPhone call on Zoom. So that's what I'm doing tonight. So if you want to learn about how Zoom works on your iPhone, be sure to join me for that. Yes, I will be talking about a lot of the pesky issues. And we'll talk about things like, for instance, how can you sign in with your name versus a guy uh, signing in as iPhone and stuff like that. So... Um, Which would I, I be think... great, because mm -hmm. then you wouldn't. Then you'd know it was you instead of people saying who's iPhone and about three people are like, well, I don't know. It could be me. Mm-hmm. And um, so uh, there you go. All right. Do we have any hands over on Clubhouse? No, we don't. In fact, the people that were here have left. So I need. I'm lonesome over here. We need folks here. <laughs> but no hands. Well, at least oh, well, there were people, we but I guess, I guess they left when um, we when we'd made, we started eating. Well, when Herbie and Janelle started eating. <laughs> like, like, okay, well, French <laughs> toast is made. I can go now. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see how it is, guys. Exactly. Well, uh, unfortunately, we don't have Nelvis on here because then she could ask you if you're lonesome tonight, but... I knew he was going to go there. <laughs> Sheila, do we have anyone else in Zoom? You do, Tyann. Thank you, Tyann. Okay. Got any tips besides trying to make sure that there's enough batter on the axis? Can you, can you repeat that, Tyann? You were a bit 
Oh, sorry. There you go. Voiceover is talking. Um, so besides trying to get batter on the uh, edges, is there any other tips for not burning the edges? Um, mm. Not really. Flip more often. Yeah. Um, th the main way reason that any of it burns is that it stayed still too long. So if you find that um, it's burning at, in any in any particular spot or at all, then your best bet is flipping more frequently. It doesn't hurt to flip it, it, it like just every minute or so, even if um, that it's going to need longer in the long run, if that's going to help it to not burn. Um, the other thing that might be causing an issue with bits burning is if there wasn't enough oil slash butter in the frying pan. Yep. And so that's why I said you want a good amount of oil. You don't want too much, but you do want enough to that way it's not cut. You don't, you don't want it too oily, but at the same time, you don't want too little, so it's going to burn easy. That's and, why butter um, is a good option, because then it's not oily, but you still... Yep. And the other thing, too, is that I find that the thicker bread doesn't burn as easily. So if you get a nice, thick bread... Um, that's going to help versus a more thinner bread. So, and if you have nothing but French bread, that does work too. You can cut it into like thick pieces. So that's a little bit harder to do. And that it goes. Would it the then be French French again. toast? Ooh, that's <laughs> yeah. a good question. Hmm. It probably Are would you? be so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give a, give a piece to Lois. Hello, Aria. Uh, now, all I'm going to say, children, is, uh, you know, you told me not to eat with my mouth for last week, so I'm going to give you a good dose of it this week, and that is share and be nice to your uh, sister and mother as well. But uh, sh sharing is very important. So, but you probably shouldn't sure. share this with Ian. Ian's no, the dog. That, that would, yeah, that that would not be a good idea. There, there, there is an exception there. Now, if he makes something like turk bacon or sausage or whatever, you could definitely share that with him if he's allowed to eat that type of thing. But, um, because not all dogs are first. allowed to eat. Yeah, ask mommy first. So, there you go. All right. Do we have any other hands on either platform? Yes, Abraham. <coughs> Abraham. Hi. Um, so what I also normally do is add a little baking soda to my batter. I think that makes it a little bit fluffier. Um, yes, and then as an option, instead of a sweet French toast, um, I cut up some chilies and a little bit of onion and coriander and make it savory um, and salt and pepper. Um, that's that also really tasty. Good. And then um, then there was something else I wanted to say and I can't remember it. Can't remember it. Um, uh, oh, I use uh, cream sometimes instead of milk or half cream, half milk. I even used yogurt once. And that mm -hmm. came out good as well. I bet. I bet that'll All help right. if you want a thick batter. Yes. Now, I, can't, I meant to do this last week, and uh, one of us will get to it later today. I was going to be nice, so uh, uh, Abraham did actually give me the recipe for black, bre uh, black, bre black bean brownies. Too many so, since I was talked to... <laughs> yeah. Black bean brownies. Three Bs. Two combinations and a recipe I am not going to make. Now, two reasons. One, that does not sound good. Two, I think it would be good for Abraham's confidence if he decides to uh, make it himself one day on the call because I'm just not nice like that. Or maybe I am being nice. I don't know. I'll let you decide. 
It's one but of those I think recipes we... that if Abraham wants to come and make it. Yeah, uh, I, I may know the, uh, I've heard of the recipe, but I myself, I won't be brave enough to try it. <laughs> or if somebody else has heard of it and would like to make it, then they're welcome to get in touch and say that they'd like to be on the call. Uh, and I was thinking we could be nice enough to, to post them. it. Yep, but I was yeah. thinking, you know, because that'll make it first so people can hear of it. We could post it to the ACB cooks list for anybody that's interested. And um, Yeah, we could post, post it on there and people can just try it by themselves. Yep. I'll do that later. All right, so if you want to try it and if you like it and you want to make it on the call, then let us know and we will book you. Speaking of future calls, next week. We are going to be making money. Oh, wait a minute. That's not that doesn't sound right. We're going to be uh, kind of the breadwinner. Yep. We're going to be breadwinners. Oh, wait a minute. That doesn't still sound right. Um, Let's see. Let's, who you're, wrote You're thinking of the wrong anyway? kind of dough there. Oh, uh, yep. Oh, we're going to be making bread. There you go. Um, the, uh, God, sorry about that. <laughs> For a minute there. I thought we were all going to get rich, but... Uh, we're going to be making no, that, bread that or as much of it we can make and yep we're going to make bread or at least as much of it as we can make within an hour and a half and uh it sounds like it's, it's an exciting recipe so uh that is uh, what we've got on board for us and uh i need to also go pick out my valentine's day recipe um because we're going to give so him I'm a chore gonna... to pick his recipe for his own call yeah I know this. This is truly amazing. I've never had this experience in quite a while. But we have Belinda coming on before that, though. Yes. So um, you know, it's funny because next week we're gonna be breadwinners. The following week it's gonna be let's make a dill. Oh, wait a minute. That's not make, let's make a deal. It's how to make dill pickle soup. So. <sighs> yes, Herbie. Oh, sorry, sorry, guys. Then the week after that is when Herbie gets a turn to pick the recipe. Yep. I'm thinking I'm going in the route of a barbecue. I saw a couple of barbecue chicken recipes that sound very interesting. So I'm thinking I'm going along that route because we got a mixture of sweet and savory. But uh, I'll be working on that in the next couple of weeks. And, uh, and then what do we have after that? I know we've got Deb coming up. Well, before tab before Deb, we've got we're going to have a, we potentially an attempt to Tabitha's pierogi recipe. That's oh be yes, that's right. So uh, we're going to do that, and um, then it's going to be Deb, and then we still have to confirm date the date for Diane. Um, but that's as far as we've got with March at the moment. So if you want to come and do something on the cooking call, you need to get in touch so we can book you in. Or if you have any requests for anything else to take a, to for us to take under yeah, consideration, yeah. yep, no guarantee we'll definitely do it, but we'll definitely consider it. Exactly. So um, I still think one of the things I will make, I think, for the cooking call, so we can kind of plan on this as spaghetti, um, the regular spaghetti, because we did Belinda's baked spaghetti. So I think we can plan for regular spaghetti at some point. In March, that'll be a fun one to do, mm -hmm. as uh, we get to talk about boiling noodles and uh, all that good stuff. Yeah, ten and minutes. Perhaps, thanks, Sheila. And all perhaps right. for Pie Day, we could do that um, other pizza re thing that you wanted to do. Oh yes, because I talked about revisiting pizza, didn't I? You did, and since Pie Day is in March. Yes. A pizza All right. pie? It is a pie. Um, I forgot which pizza I said I was going to do now, but uh, I've got several. I don't remember. Um, I just remember you saying something about pizza, and I thought you'd like to pick something for your own call. Yeah, I, I would. Oh, we've got the very uh, basics from the frozen pizza. How do you do that to, uh, you know, since we're making bread, maybe we'll do the one with the uh, homemade pizza dough. And that, I think fun, that was actually, what you were so. wanting to do, I think. Uh, yep. That. So that's what we're, okay, so we're, we're going to do an Italian thing then in March. Um, Apparently. A couple things. 
apparently spaghetti and uh, pizza. Not on the same day, but... Uh, we're going to have um, spaghetti, we're going to have pizza. Hopefully we're going to be having Italian sausage with Diane. Yep. Oh, we just need one more Italian thing to make. and uh, Well, that's technically the pierogies. They're Italian, so... Yeah, but that's February. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we'll see if anybody has any requests or wants to make a guest appearance, and then... We will go from there, but I want to thank each and every one of you for coming on today's call. And uh, Allison, they didn't work you at all today, I'm sorry, but uh, still glad to have you with us anyway. And um, glad to be Sheila, here. all right. Sheila, happy early birthday. And yes, guys, I actually did contribute a recipe to... Her recipe swap tomorrow night. Actually, oh, I could actually do that recipe on the call for uh, wings. It's not a very long recipe, though. It's the only disadvantage. Yes, but, but you need um, something to go with your wings, which could then be done on the same call. That, that is true. Okay. Well, there you go. Now we've got our fourth March call wings and something to go with them. So, there um, but they fit her qualifications, I think. They are, um, <clears throat> we're going to slightly modify how she uh, said it on her call the other couple weeks ago, how she likes her wings. They are unbreaded, they are fried, and you can make them as sloppy as you want them because of uh, the ratio. I, I, I overdo what the recipe says in regards to the buffalo sauce and the butter and all you that. You overdoing garlic, so. stuff? No. No, who knew? But that'll be anyway on Sheila's recipe swap along. She's looking for great birthday recipes, guys. So make her day tomorrow evening. Will you do that? And I'm, I'm, I'm even advertising this, even though she's my host. She's not paying me to do this. So, um, but uh, so be sure to join her tomorrow night at six p.m. Central, seven ACB time. And uh, let's see, that's what one your time? Midnight. Midnight, okay, well, it's an hour earlier. So, midnight UK time, and uh, if uh, you guys are still alive in Arizona, then that's like uh, 5 Mountain Time, 4 Pacific, and uh, ho ho hopefully the good are folks Are we going to give Phoenix. all the time zones? Yep, Hawaiian, it's... Uh, Okay, how about we do a final check before we say goodbye to make sure that there's no well, Didn't want to leave Kenny out, but okay. Um, I didn't know, just kidding. Okay, guys. Yeah, let's do a final check for hands. I, I agree. Um, Last are there call, any people. hands? No. In either there's platform. Okay. okay. Then in no that case, I think... Thanks, All right, else. well, then back to the time zones. Um, right. No. In that case, I think that what we should actually do is let Allison and Sheila um, close the rooms and thank them for doing such a great job, and also Deb for streaming. Thank you. Yep, and um, guys, just real quick, be sure to check out some of the other great calls happening today. There's nothing else being streamed, but uh, there are a couple of calls being that will be on Clubhouse and... No, I take that back. Unmute Presents is being streamed. Yeah, but Unmute Presents it, so. is being streamed. Yeah. There's yep. all sorts of great calls. Check your community schedules. Yes, and if you've not subscribed to the schedule, make sure you send an email to community at acb.org. And you can do two things in one email. Say, please add me to the community schedule and please add me to the ACB Cooks list. And yeah. they will gladly do both. Make sure you include your name and email address because uh, it is real people and it's a lot easier for them to find your address if you and include it in the email. And everything. Yes, they are. So thank you to everybody. It's Brad next week, guys. And, and then we hope to see you all for then. Tomorrow, and... Sheila. Thank you, dear. Yes, happy birthday for tomorrow. Happy birthday. And all right. And, you ready for me to close um, the room? Yes. Yep. Neighborhood Coffee Clutch is happening right now, guys, over in the next Yeah, room. he got so. it right again. Okay. I did. On that note. We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Allison and De uh, Sheila, you can close the room. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye, everybody.